Hey guys, one of the most annoying things being a mechanic is, you know, if you're doing an engine rebuild or fixing a coolant leak, anything, you have the coolant dumped out of a machine or a car, when you go to fill it back up, it's a pain in the butt. Um, you know, you got to pick up this heavy tank and try to pour it in the radiator with a funnel or on the bigger trucks and buses I work on, you know, you've got 10, 15, 20, sometimes 30 gallons of coolant that's getting pumped back into this uh, bus or truck. And there's no easy way to do it. You used to have uh, pumps, you know, you can pour it in buckets and try to do it that way. Well, there's a simple tool that costs about $120 that's universal that will check for leaks before it's filled, will never be overfilled, will prevent air locks, and you don't have to watch it while it's filling. It's called the airlift, and I'm going to show you how to use it, and maybe you guys will pick it up after. Thanks. So this is it. This is the uh, air lift. It comes in this flow molded case and uh, I've got this 3126 that just got a cylinder head put on it. No coolant in there, obviously, as just did the head, so locks totally drain. There's our uh, coolant containment device. It's probably got about seven or eight gallons of coolant in it for these 3126 cats. And uh, open it up. And this is how it comes, pretty much, obviously, a little used. New one will be newer. Uh, so it's reading there, It's uh, those are inches of mercury, which are a vacuum measurement. And it's got a little quick connect there with a ball valve and a rubber grommet, which it comes with a few other adapters if you have a smaller or bigger radiator neck. And you stick it in the radiator neck there. And then you just turn that that large knob and what it does is it pushes down on that rubber grommet and expands out and that's what seals your cooling system and then what you're going to need is this uh, this T they give you with this hose and what that's going to do is it's going to blow air across the T and uh, what it does is it creates a venturi effect which will suck all of the air out of this engine and cooling system so it just clicks in, quick connect, just like that. And, uh, you know, you, it doesn't, they don't give you the fittings for your airline. You just use whatever style you're using. And then you're going to run that, uh, the bypass hose, just kind of stuff it away somewhere because it's kind of, it's kind of noisy. So just point it away from yourself. And then you quick connect your air hose to it. And you'll hear it starting to suck. And what it's doing is it's uh, pulling all the air out of this system. So when you read your little dial, you'll see it's moving. And it's going towards the green there. When it gets to about 25 inches of mercury, you are good to go. If it doesn't reach that, say it stops between like the 15 and the 20, that means you have a leak because it's pulling in outside air and it's not great, creating a good vacuum. Uh, as you can see, those hoses are collapsing. That's normal because what you're doing is you're sucking all the air out. And uh, that's going to prevent any air locks from getting in the system. So I'll go back, we'll check our setup. So it's, it's going to slow down as it gets towards the 25. Um, I always try to get it to about 25, even though, you know, after 20 is in the green. I've found if you don't go up to the 25, uh, it usually won't fill the whole system. So what I usually do is I'll take my little airlift box, give you, and I'll, I'll tilt the coolant tank just so that it's all to one side. It's a little bit of uh, paint flakes in there because the uh, previous mechanic that worked on this overpainted the heck out of it, and it got a little flakes in there, but that's okay because the hose they give you for filling has a metal mesh screen on it, which prevents you know those paint flakes or any large pieces of dirt from getting in there. And uh, that hose I bought is a little bit longer than the one they give you. They give you like an 8-foot one. That's about a 12-foot one. But that only costs about 10 bucks extra. And uh, here's a little trick I use for doing the truck since the, ho or the uh, coolant reservoir is usually pretty high. I use a, a mirror. And it looks like we're about 25 inches of mercury vacuum set up there. So let's see. Uh, 
Hard to see with the light. But yeah, we're almost, we're just about at 25. So yeah, we're 25 right there. So that means we can uh, go ahead and shut off the vacuum. So what we can do is we just close the ball valve. Close the ball valve. And then disconnect your air hose. As long as that ball valve's closed, it's going to prevent any air from getting back in that system. And I will see that because the hoses are still collapsed. And they'll stay like that. If it holds a vacuum, obviously, you know, you got no leaks. So then you just connect your fill hose, which also has a cool little ball valve on it. Up, it's a quick connect. And it's pretty nice. It's all uh, pretty much brass. So, you know, it's not plastic. They do have a plastic one. It's like $10 cheaper than this one. Uh, don't buy that one. Just go ahead and get the nicer brass one. Spend the 10 bucks. I've used this setup probably, I don't know, 400 times. Never had an issue with it. So we stick it in our coolant and open the valve right there. It's starting to suck. And it does about a gallon and a half uh, per minute. As it gets fuller, it'll slow down because there's less, uh, less of a vacuum differential. So you can see the little needles moving down back into the red because it's pulling coolant in. And this system works really good. If you have an RV or a bus, which are really bad for getting airlocks, uh, this will prevent those from getting airlocks. I've used this to fill uh, power steering reservoirs. Uh, any real light duty stuff, it'll suck up, but it's really made for cooling systems. And uh, the best thing is, if you wanted to, you could walk away from this setup. It can't overfill because it's a closed system when it's filling. So there's, there's no way to overfill it. Um, it'll stop once it's full. It's pretty much, uh, you know, fire and forget. If I wasn't making a video about it, I'd probably be hooking up the batteries, you know, doing something else with it. And uh, going to show as it is pulling down. It's going to empty this. Take a couple minutes. Kind of fast forward here. So about two minutes later, and we're almost empty. You can actually see it. You know pulling in and like i said it gets a little bit slower towards the end just because it's you know less vacuum and our tank is yeah, it's about full it's half full but these are half full is full this is still full and that screen has kept any of the dirt particles or uh paint flakes from getting up in there Look at that. It has totally sucked that dry. I uh, hope you like this video. If you do, go ahead and uh, click like and subscribe if you would. Thank you very much.